Hey, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a sequel to my Natural Girl Starter Kit Drugstore Edition video. I wasn't planning on doing a sequel to this, but I got a lot of comments saying, will you do a high-end version? And I thought that would be, let's just, let's just face it, I mean, I'm not against a good splurgy splurge product, but what I really wanted to focus on is investment products. So not just products that you just wanna go blow your money on, but these are truthfully things that I've been using for years, I've been using on other people for years, and that I think are just quality staple products. And I really wanted to focus this for all skin types as well. So I have a couple of, uh, you know, switch up options depending on the product. And then there's also some things that I'm just not even going to recommend from the high end spectrum there, especially if you are just starting out building your kit. There are a lot of things that you can really uh, opt for the more affordable route on. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to break this down for you. Natural Girl Starter Kit 2.0 High End Edition. Let's go. Okay, let's go ahead and crack the case on brushes. I wanna go through this very briefly. Truthfully, I still think that if you are a beginner, you're starting out your own kit, I think the more affordable route is the way to go as far as brushes go, but if you have some money to splurge, some money to spend, I am going to recommend two different types or two different sets of brushes that have really stuck with me for uh, a long time. The first uh, are IT Cosmetics brushes. I have been using these for years. I have some that are probably nearing over five years old, and I never find that they shed, that they break down. They're a good sturdy, like quality brush. Uh, and honestly, I feel like there have been very few that I've tried from the brand that didn't really impress me. So IT Cosmetics brushes, great ones to look into. And then also this line from Smashbox, which I believe you can only get on their website now, uh, maybe on Nordstrom. It seems to be hit or miss, like some will be sold out, but I checked the website. They are still available on Smashbox's website. Uh, in particular, this blurring foundation brush, a lot of you all have seen me use this for years now. You've bought it off of my recommendation and uh, I just use it for several things regarding the face. But just in general, these are very well-made brushes and um, they have some sets that you can invest in on their website as well. So yeah, truthfully, real techniques, like I reach for those brushes more than anything, but since this is the high-end spectrum, I did want to talk about a couple. I'm going to say the same thing about primer as I think I did in my drugstore video, and that is that primer is very subjective. It's really going to depend on your skin type, and if you even feel like you need primer, most of you know I just tend to use moisturizer or very liquid-based products for my primer because I have dry skin. So truthfully, it's just going to have to be an experiment thing for you if you've never used it before. Go to Sephora, get a few samples, test them out, see if it's something you really need to invest your money in. Um, otherwise, most of the time, a lot of people don't even need primer. Let's talk foundation because that is a great place to start when building your starter kit. It is the base of the entire makeup look. And I have one star recommendation that has been, it, truthfully, like if you can't respect this foundation in my presence, I might have to karate chop you. That's how strongly I feel about just the versatility and the amazingness of this product and it's MAC Face and Body. To me, there is no other versatile foundation out there like this. I have been using it not only on myself, but on clients for years. The reason I recommend foundations that are a little bit more on the light coverage side or buildable coverage side is because I really like to pair a lighter base with a fuller coverage concealer. So I'll get into that in a second but not only is this such a versatile foundation it can be worn in the sheerest form to about a medium coverage it's waterproof um, it just looks so healthy on the skin if you are oily if you are dry if you're mature this is something that i just i use on every single skin type uh, i know that there are some of you out there who have said you know i just feel like i'm too oily for this product so i do have two other recommendations i just want to briefly talk about i think the more combination counterpart to MAC Face and Body is the Dior Face and Body. So this one is a little bit more mattifying. It is a bit 
uh, it has a little bit more coverage to it and also it gives you like just an instant gratification. You don't really have to build it up as much as face and body. So it's a little less fuss in that sense, but do I think it looks better? Absolutely not. Um, I think it's a beautiful foundation, but I do think it suits combination skin um, a little bit better. And then finally, Makeup Forever Ultra HD, a real pioneer, a real staple in the uh, foundation world. Again, great for all skin types. It looks so healthy, so natural. Just a great multi-purpose year-round foundation. It's not limited to any season. As a matter of fact, none of these foundations are, but I do wanna briefly round up with MAC Face and Body. If you've never tried it before, I would 10 out of 10 recommend. If you have, if you have it, you're not sure how to use it, I do have a video talking about how to properly use Face and Body and how it kind of works with the skin and why it's different from other foundations. But all around, very beautiful healthy looking foundation you can go from the sheerest coverage to a nice medium coverage with it and um, it just it's that foundation so like I said when recommending starter products to people I really like to recommend a base product that does not exceed a medium coverage mainly because I like to recommend concealers that are a bit fuller coverage the reason for that is because it's just a little bit more customizable uh, you if you just go out and you buy a full coverage foundation and then you have full coverage concealer you can't really do an in-between with those products um, some days you might want to go for you know, a more natural look, a more lightweight look. You can't really do that when you have two even just solid like medium coverage products. So um, by using something like face and body and then pairing it with a fuller coverage concealer, you can really customize that coverage. Again, I'm gonna pull out just a classic from MAC. A lot of people wanna give, um, especially a lot of, I've noticed younger, like even younger than me, um, people in the beauty community really give MAC a hard time. And I think a lot of people forget that MAC was a solid pioneer in not only a diverse sense of the beauty world, but just their products, they work. They, they still to this day work. And one of my um, favorite products by them is their concealer. It's the Studio Finish Concealer. Great one for discoloration, darkness, um, spot concealing. It is a thicker formula. It definitely has more of like that medium full coverage uh, look to it, but it's very emollient. So it sits on the skin nicely. It doesn't look drying and um, it pairs so well with face and body. Uh, so this would definitely be a top recommendation. Again, also very portable, very cute. You can make these in duos if you want two shades, like one lighter, one darker, or one corrector. You can do a lot of different things with these on the MAC website. I uh, also wanna give a shout out to one for more mature skin. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. Now, I hated this when I first tried it. It traditionally comes with a little puff on it. I have removed mine. I have quite a few of these now because I do use this concealer quite frequently. Um, but it is, again, a medium to full-ish coverage concealer. What I like to do is remove that sponge, place a little bit on the back of my hand, and then use a little brush to blend out the concealer. Uh, that's how I apply most of my concealers anyways. But by doing that, it just transforms the product as opposed to using that puff and then like blending it out. I don't know what it is, but it's just too much that comes out when you have that puff on. So Magic Away it has this really cool elasticity to it to where I think it sits really nicely on top of fine lines or wrinkles. Um, so this is definitely one that I think is a really nice innovative formula, but also offers coverage. Okay, I wanna talk about blush and bronzer, and this is gonna ruffle some tail feathers out there, but truthfully, blush and bronzer, powder blush and bronzers, I'm gonna say. Um, to me, they've all been done. Nothing mesmerizes me anymore. Are there some really nice formulas out there? Yes, but when it comes to uh, blush and bronzer, powder form in general, it, they're very accessory makeup items. So what I would recommend doing is trying to um, find a nice palette, a nice face palette that kind of comes with a lot of your face products. Not only is it going to like, most of the time condense down on 
uh, pricing, but it's just very portable. It's very easy to use if you are a beginner. Um, I have a few here. This is the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting uh, Ghost Edition. I mean, you, you guys know they make these every single year. This is probably a very bad example because these sell out every single year, but just an example, it doesn't have to be from Hourglass or any of the other brands. Just looking for something that has your bronzer, your blush, maybe a couple of powders and highlighter in there. Uh, a really, this is probably the only blush formula powder wise that really just still to this day that I use and intrigues me. And that's the ambient lighting blush formula from Hourglass. I think they are very innovative and unique formula and they're gorgeous they have a built-in just sheen to them I'm wearing a little bit on my uh, cheeks today so these would be two that I think investment wise are beautiful products and uh, they're just different they're different from what's you know traditionally out there and then finally I'm hesitant to talk about this because most of these are discontinued now and the only one that's available is the, I think, a holiday version that she's released. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it because these have been with me for a long time and that's the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look and a Palette. Now, she used to have like four or five of these out at one point and now there's only one. Uh, but this comes with just traditionally three really great standard eyeshadows nothing to overwhelm you it's uh, they're always shades that are wearable generally the darkest one on the end will allow you to create a nice nighttime look it really allows you to experiment with shadows in a not so overwhelming way that a full-on eyeshadow palette would um, and then of course in these you get a bronzer a highlighter and two blushes again very accessory items uh, but obviously travel friendly very beneficial so as far as like powder blush bronzers go just try to find you a nice palette um, colors that you resonate with and that you think you will enjoy using on a daily basis powder all I'm gonna say is find you a good translucent powder uh, this might be a trial and error thing for you I can recommend a few the one I've really been loving for months now is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter powder which is very shocking it is a little bit more on the mat mattifying side but it is so in such a way that is soft and blurring and forgiving and not flat and dull and super super matte on the skin uh, very great I think if you do have some fine lines uh, going on and you need to set certain areas I don't think that this emphasizes uh, those areas it's very soft and like the name says filterish um, the by Terry hyaluronic hydro powder beautiful one very pricey uh, but it is so so incredibly lightweight it's you will never be able to see it on the skin it's gorgeous Bare Minerals, Mineral Veil, really great option as well. Uh, there's just so many out there. Uh, and again, just kind of like a trial and error process. Now, let's talk about a blush and bronzer that I do feel are special and that I do feel are very lovely products to invest in. And that is my Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer. This is a cream bronzer. I think everyone needs like at least one cream bronzer or blush in their collection. It's just, it adds another element to the skin that is just like hyper realistic. It's not just a ton of powder sitting on top of the skin. Just incorporate one cream blush or bronzer product and see if that makes a difference for you. Um, I, I think it just makes the skin look more healthy and then secondly my Daniel Sandler watercolor blushes so these are just again iconic products they deserve more love they are amazing uh, just quick to apply daily staples that uh, not only give you just a gorgeous finish but they're just to me pretty user-friendly uh, milk matte bronzer this is something that I've had for well over a year now I'm still not out of it I use it every single day I think I would not even consider this to be like high-end because it's $24 and it's lasted me for over a year gorgeous just like sun-kissed look it adds this hyper realism to the skin it makes you look like you actually have color to your skin as opposed to just like you know throwing on a powder bronzer and then we all know my love for um and if you don't know these are 
basically just like crack to me. Not that I've done crack, but this is probably the closest thing to an addiction that I've had. Uh, and I love collecting these bad boys. They're beautiful, they are long lasting. I've talked about how to use them if you're unfamiliar in videos before, I'll link them down below. Basically they are liquid blushes and they are just like, unlike any blush you've ever tried. They are stunning. The color range is just gorgeous. There's one for all skin types. These come in several different colors and they just have this nice, healthy, blushed appearance. Nothing flat like a traditional matte powder blush would give you. Um, it's just, they're crazy. I love them. Remember how I said there were a couple products that I would just really recommend going the uh, drugstore or more affordable route on? Truthfully, that is mascara and brow products. I think that there are a ton of brow products now at the drugstore. Uh, the drugstore brands are really honing in on not <laughs> just releasing like super orange brow crayons. So um, actually the one that I've been using for years now is the Sephora Brow Kit. I know that's not really drugstore, uh, but it's like right in between a drugstore and high-end price point. Just a nice uh, brow palette like this. Powders are super user-friendly, easy to use, and uh, I don't know. I just feel like you can't go wrong with a powder brow palette. Uh, so that's really all I have to say. Um, I don't have a mascara recommendation because I myself stopped buying high-end mascaras this year. Um, I was sent a few, which I have used, but other than that, uh, yeah, I, um, I just, I, um, you know, it's mascara. Like, it's different for everyone. Eyeshadow, I feel like we all saw this coming if you are familiar with my channel. And uh, if you don't pick up a palette that already has eyeshadows in it, if you want to go that route, perfectly fine. Like, that's very reasonable. However, I'm going to recommend my caviar sticks because I just don't think there's anything easier out there. I would literally die for every single shade of a caviar stick. I think they are also stunning and user friendly. And once there needs to be like a slogan for the caviar sticks, like, you know, once you use them, you just don't go back. You don't go back to eyeshadow palettes. I am absolutely just like disgusted when I see eyeshadow palettes now. I'm so tired and bored with them. They're just, I don't know. It, it's just, it, they've all been done and they cannot give you the finish and the looks that a caviar stick can. I think that these are so beautiful. Bobbi Brown also makes some great ones. I'm just a pretty loyal to these because I have basically every single shade. Um, but if you are new to my channel, you're not that familiar with caviar sticks. I have a bajillion videos at this point. I have a video where I show how to use them, how to use cream eyeshadows in general, but uh, just a couple of these in your bag and you're good to go. I'm wearing one caviar stick on my eye today and that is it. I'm wearing Coco, which is the one that I would recommend. It's just a deep dark brown. You can do so many looks with it. You can use it as eyeliner. You can use it as a very sheer wash of brown. You can smoke it out. I've got mine a little bit more smoke you today. Um, so yeah, I, any of these shades would just, everybody always ask me like, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Coco is definitely my favorite because it's the most versatile and I use it the most, but, um, I use plum a lot. I use amethyst a lot. I use orchid. Um, I use copper. Like I use them all. Now is also a great time to get them because they are available in sets, which doesn't happen often. Okay, finally, we have reached the end, which is lips. Uh, this is just a complete preference thing. I mean, lipstick, lip gloss, again, a very subjective thing. It's just whatever you tend to like. My splurge as far as lip liners go are always going to be Charlotte Tilbury lip cheats. Uh, I don't know what it is about them other than the fact that they are very long wearing, but I, without hesitation, will repurchase these. And I just don't do that often with uh, 
a lot of products in general, but these are just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about them. I love using them. They just, for some reason, remind me like when I look at them of just old school classic beauty. And that may be it. That may be the reason why I love them so much. I think the shades are amazing. I'm wearing Iconic Nude right now, which is one of my all-time favorites. Obviously, Pillow Talk is a classic. And then Super Size Me is one that I um, often use. So these would be my recommendation if you want to splurge on a little, a little lip pencil. Absolutely do not have lipstick recommendations. Would I recommend Charlotte Tilbury? Absolutely. She has some really gorgeous shades, but lipstick again, uh, it just, there's so many out there. If you go through my lipstick collection, you'll probably see the most Charlotte Tilbury and the most probably Mac. I do enjoy a good Mac lipstick as well. Uh, but lip glosses, I do have a pretty strong preference on. My first choice is always going to be uh, Buxom. And again, really great time to get Buxom buxom right now because it's the holidays and they've got these super cheap lip sets. This one's 10 bucks and you get two shades, two little minis in here. Buxom is the original plumping lip gloss. If you don't like that tingling, minty feeling, you're not, this isn't going to be for you. But truthfully, their shades are just the most gorgeous. They have the most outstanding colors and just you look at them. It, I have been wearing Buxom for over 10 years now or probably close to, to it, like 2011 is, I, don't ask me how I know, but 2011 is when I started wearing Buxom. And um, I still to this day go to Ulta and I look at shades that I personally have or that I've worn in the past and I'm like, damn, I want that. Like it looks so pretty. Um, so yeah, not only do they give you just this pouted full shine look they just come an amazing variety of shades second one if you're not a plumping fan uh i think a, sh a formula that gives you a similar appearance to the buxom without that plumping tingly effect is the fenty beauty gloss bombs they are very glossy they're gorgeous uh really enjoy this formula they're comfortable to wear so would definitely um, recommend. I think they're a nice counterpart to the Buxom. They're very similar, but they don't have that tingly feel. Okay, I think we have made it through. I think I've talked about everything I could possibly think of. Uh, if you have any questions for me, leave them down below. I hope that this kind of gave you some ideas. If you're trying to build some high-end products up in your collection, I uh, hope this you know helped you out, gave you some recommendations. If you are familiar with my channel, this is probably a guessing game for you, but truthfully, these are things that are just stunning. I think I just don't feel bad when I spend the money on them because I know the quality's there, the performance is there with most of these things, or if, I mean, all of these things. And uh, there's nothing wrong with mixing and matching, you know, drugstore and high end. Uh, having like a 90% drugstore collection and then maybe just splurging on your base, your foundation, or your concealer. Uh, we all, obviously, most people do that, I feel, we have a nice mix of drugstore and high end. So that's why I wanted to do a secret. Uh, to my initial drugstore video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.